During the breeding season, a bird's life revolves around the nest. Nests can be intricate, like that of the bio weaver, or messy, like those of kites and crows. Birds nest in a variety of places, from trees to abandoned or occupied human dwellings, and from mud walls to cliff faces. The process of species propagation begins inevitably with the act of mating. This involves transfer of sperm from the male's cloaca to the female's, where the eggs are fertilized. Nest construction involves many strenuous hours of flying to and fro, carrying materials like twigs, grass, dried leaves, mud pellets, and spider silk. One of the more fascinating sights is watching how the Asian Paradise flycatcher first carries spider silk by wrapping the silk around its beak and then binds the nest by repeatedly twisting its neck. Birds are also known to steal materials from other nests, a facet of bird behavior that resembles humans. Thorny acacia and palm trees provide sanctuary to one of the most intricate nests in the avian world, that of the bio weaver. These nests are constructed from leaves of grass and strong fibers and are protected by their placement in tall trees and those above water bodies. The male invites females to inspect the nest with excited shrieks and flapping of wings. In case the invitation is declined, the nest is left incomplete at the helmet stage and work begins on another. From what looks like debris on a neem tree, suddenly appears the hook nose of a female purple-rumped sunbird. Disguise and deception protect this nest, constructed by the female. The male's role is limited to adding a few finishing touches. The Asian paradise flycatcher gives birth to altricial chicks. They are born blind and helpless and do not leave the nest for varying periods of time, unlike the hen or the duck, whose precocial chicks can see and fend for themselves at birth. Precocial chicks leave the nest immediately after birth. Paradise flycatcher nests are made near streams as these attract dragonflies, a protein-rich food for the young. Observations over a number of seasons show that the blue-throated barbet returns to the same hole in the tree trunk year after year. Fruits and insects are the primary diet for the hungry fledglings in the dark hollow. The hoopo prefers to nest in dark crevices in the mud walls of village homes and tree hollows. For chicks reared in dark surroundings, nature has provided a white lining around the mouth, thereby ensuring minimal wastage of food. These linings disappear over time. Moths are a delicacy for the young of the chestnut-tailed starling. Other insects, fruit and nectar are also taken.
overlapping nests on the ground where predation is always a clear and present danger. It deceives predators by flying some distance away from the nest with its loud, insistent call. This lures the predator away from the young. When it comes to feeding, the blue magpie is as gentle as possible, inserting its long and strong beak into the brightly coloured mouths of the chicks. How they ensure equal distribution among the chicks remains one of nature's unsolved mysteries. This thrush is named after a British ornithologist, Samuel Dicker, after whom a number of other Indian birds, like Dicker's leaf warbler, are named. Bright orange palettes are a characteristic of chicks in open nests. This aids the feeding process. With time, the orange colour disappears. Birds are at their most vulnerable during incubation and chick rearing. But in spite of all the risks, reproduction is their reason for existence, their raison d'être. <laughs>